Many pros run, train and race on field, but let's be real, we're not all blessed with inner Illuic chokes. So, a watch is going to have to do. Enter, well, us, the mere mass mortal runners and the data field watch of choice. But do you know how to use all that data, like how to actually use it? What are the bare basics you need from a watch? What do runners need exactly? How much is too much? And honestly, do you even need to fork out for a watch these days? They're pretty expensive. Well, let's unpack all that together as painless as possible. What watches offer what? <laughs> Honestly, that took like nine takes. The bone basics are fitness trackers. The majority will give you step count, calories burnt, time active and distance. The higher end ones might offer heart rate readings too, but that's about it. They're great for beginners, simple to use and have minimal data to analyze, like how long you ran for, essentially and how far you went basically then there's gps running watches which are loaded with more technology to more accurately record your route pace distance cadence elevation and vertical gains the more advanced will probably offer sleep data recovery metrics and training plans as well great for any runner to be honest from beginner to fitness enthusiast right up to professional athlete but brand to brand they offer varying data so do your homework before you part with your money. And hopefully this guide will help you through that too. Then you have the heart rate monitors, which are the gold standard compared to a wrist wearable. And this kind of data can really guide your running into super specific areas like fat burn, threshold training, recovery, speed work. It better suits an experienced runner, but it's not exclusive to the seasoned athlete. You just gotta understand the zones and your heart rate and all the sort of maths with it. Why do we need data? Well, in a nutshell, like the data isn't here to rule our lives, but to help highlight patterns, predict or prevent injuries, understand a plateau or even worse, a decline in performance. It can help you bespoke training to fit your overall goals as well, like a glove. Harnessed well, data can unlock so much, but how do you know what you're looking for? Now that is the question. Right, so watch data. <laughs> Let's run through this as painless as possible. There's some data you might not be utilizing with your current watch and because it is very daunting. The majority of running watches give you metrics like the time, distance, pace, and maybe calories. Pretty self-explanatory, right? Going up a level to GPS watches will offer things like power output, how much effort you're putting into your run, which is also affected by the weather, this rainy weather it's a more instant metric than heart rate which is great i mean have you ever done heart rate based intervals it's absolute chaos there's incline and decline data for how much of your run was up or downhill cadence how many steps you take per minute yes this does matter this data can help you run more economically heart rate variability the time between consecutive heartbeats the higher the hrv score the more time in between heartbeats, the greater recovery and then health implications. A little bit backwards to what we're probably expecting. And training load data. How much load do you put on your body per session? It's sort of a, a fact over feeling, if you will. And then there's running dynamics data. <laughs> Buckle up. Vertical oscillation. And how much you're moving up and down on a run and wasting energy bouncing up and down like Tigger. No jumpy, bumpy, clumpy, bump. Is it? Is he a tiger? Yeah, instead of going forward. We want this number as low as possible vertical ratio this is the sum of the up and down movement we just spoke about against how much you actually move forward with each step and as runners we like forward so we want this number to be as low as possible too vo2 max scores this is how well your muscles take in and use oxygen then there's sleep data a breakdown of each stage of sleep and helps you understand how recovered you are or not oh my god i'm getting soaked and ground contact time that's how long each foot spends on the ground with each step you take it's a lot isn't it? i'm getting soaked so we're gonna move how much is too much well honestly speaking yeah the data is a bit generally overkill for the average everyday runner and sometimes less really is more but data can improve your running performance no i don't need to know that my heart rate increases as i run up a hill that data kind of is pointless but there is crazy detailed stuff and little gems in there that i think if you take some time and discover they, they really can change your performance and I have absolutely used each metric I just mentioned for different points of my training I don't use them all all the time disclaimer for example the vertical oscillation and the ground contact time steps have helped me 
so much in understanding how much stress I was putting in my lower limbs. They were the two metrics I was really focusing on through my rehab, 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 rehabilitation back from a really rough hip injury. HRV, yeah, I have a daily check-in in the morning just to plan my workout later that day or to take a rest day. I have a look of how I feel and then check into the stats. Power output, um, I have that on my watch face instead of heart rate when I'm looking at interval work or strength work. Heart rate monitoring, yes, absolutely. Over the past four, maybe five years, I've adopted the heart rate zone based training, especially for sort of my ultra marathons and some marathons, which have helped me be so specific. And it's helped me rein back in on my like recovery runs as well, which have been great, which power could also do, but I've stuck to heart rate zones on that. And I don't think I'm gonna go back actually, to be honest. Am I reliant on it? No. But when you're a consistent overtrainer, like me, guilty, the likes of HRV, heart rate, power, are excellent metrics to understand and look to where you're pushing too hard and to help you ease off. And they also help with those mental gremlins when your body needs a rest, but your brain doesn't want to give you the rest, but you have to take it because otherwise you're gonna riddle yourself an injury. And the data shows that, there's no hiding. The type of runners need what type of data? Well, there's a reason watches are, let's say, catered to some runners over others. Why? Good question. Because of what features and data that they actually offer. Track runners need to run economically. So cadence, vertical, oscillation, ground contact time, VO2 max, lap splits are paramount. However, like injured runners or those prone to reoccurring injuries can use that nitty gritty data to understand where there's imbalances and maybe address them before it completely derails your training or to help you get back on your feet as well make sure you're on track with your rehab beginner runners you kind of need things to be kept as simple and just fall in love with running so a fitness tracker would do well here or maybe just an older model or a less intense gps watch you don't want to be overwhelmed with all the data it's it's not going to make running fun on the other hand, long distance marathon runners and ultra marathon runners, sky runners, you know, they need accurate navigation. They need a absolute bang in battery life. They need rest, sleep metrics and heart rate metrics too. How much you bounce up and down on the trails won't help massively, to be honest. And it probably wouldn't be accurate anyway with the undulating surface. Speaking of inaccurate, did you know that GPS watches are not 100% accurate? I read somewhere that they aim to be about 97%, which means you're probably better off in some situations manually hitting that lap button, for example, on the track. The watch might not know you've ran 400 meters, for example, when you know you absolutely have. So you're better off hitting that lap button manually. Likewise, there is a bunch of apps out there like Runkeeper, Strava, uh, Nike Run Club, Run Meter, who are competitive with crazy data. So you don't have to fork out and get a watch if you run with your phone anyway. I mean, it's just nice to have there to glance, but if you're not, if you're not doing structured workouts, does it really matter? Probably not. The likes of Apple Watch and other smart watches are super competitive as well with running brands regarding the data. So you might already have that to hand and you could utilize what you've already got rather than forking out. So do you really need a run specific watch? Absolutely not, no. But to learn how your body responds to training, to get the most out of your training plan, to hit your run goals, to enjoy running into old age, which we all want, let's be honest, and remain injury free, again, something else we want, you might want to consider diving into your data every now and again.